Good afternoon, PAX East, and welcome to the Personal History of Video Games, Chapter 2. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. It's really appreciated. My name is Eric Canius, and I'm Canadian. But enough about me. Let's introduce my panelists, and then we'll get into what the panel is and start talking. On the far left there, we have Dave Lang from Iron Galaxy. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. This is going to be the best panel you see all week. <laughs> Absolutely. And then to my left, we have Maya Coleman from Goat Wolf Cabbage LLC, makers of Secret Hitler. <laughs> and to my right, we have Brandon Stennis from Versus Evil, also streaming all the time on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and on the end there, we have the one and only Greg Miller from Kind of Funny. Hi. Feel free to say to speak, anyone. To say hello. But that's okay. What's up? <laughs> hello. Hi. There we go. Uh, so this panel, the personal history of video games, is all about. We all know the dates and uh, and times of when consoles came out and games releases and all that stuff. But it's about how uh, they affected our lives and our personal history with them, rather than the timeline that we see of of the commercial goods and how these um, products. Oh, that's a close up. These products. <laughs> can we get a little wider on that? <laughs> Thank you. These products. Closer. I want the other camera closer on it. <laughs> and how these products have led us to places and let us meet people like stuff like PAX where we're here for the commercial stuff but we have our friends here we have all the people that we meet and there's all the stuff in in life and how this has happened with our family and friends and communities and that sort of thing and then it, it creates situations that you normally wouldn't be in so I'll start off with my story the one that I haven't used last time um, I'll try to embellish it a bit my it, so I have four older brothers and anyone with siblings knows they're a pain in the ass most of the times, or sometimes. You can be lucky sometimes. But um, my brother was a hockey player, being Canadian, and so we had mini sticks. I don't know if anyone know, everyone knows what mini sticks oh, are? Yeah. No. Just yeah. a stick, but it's a, little... a miniature plastic hockey stick. Like how many? Like this many? Like this big. <laughs> like a foot. Okay. There, okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry. And then we would uh, cool. heat up the end of it and f bend it so you can get more of a flick on it. Some people, I see some nods. Um, but anyways, he was very good. And so while I was playing Spyro the Dragon on the PlayStation 1 in our living room, he was using the stick to flick a little ball at me over and over, and it would bounce off my head and roll down me and go back to him. He was that skilled. So he was able to get the ball back. It was a self-returning brother-bothering system. And then the one time I was able to catch it, and I hucked it against the wall, and it bounced off the wall and hit the reset button on the PlayStation 1, oh, and I lost yeah. everything. And he won. <laughs> that, it was just classic um, sibling tormentor through video games and somehow he made me reset the game on myself Ugh. and so that was fabulous um, but I don't know if anyone here has siblings or any sibling stories to tell I have, I have a lot of those but like uh, <laughs> um, well I have props so not weird stuff so don't worry um, so the first thing I have here Wait, is really? um, oh, Streets of Rage Damn. One. Uh, this is a game that I uh, played with my brother um, on six pack if you guys remember that one uh, I played this at my grandmother's house with him and it was like one of the greatest games I ever played in my entire life like as a kid and the music was perfect and then um, I remember playing two three I still haven't actually beat three which is kind of sad uh, but this is like one of my favorite games. I finally bought this a few months ago just to have the, the box and just to see that like, you know, classic box art and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, my brothers were a big inspiration back in the day to like play video games because that's all we had and, and, and continuing on and doing cool stuff with it now has been pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So did you find that video games, you were able to uh, spend more time with your brothers and that sort of thing or was it an, in addition to? Unfortunately, yes. Of course, I had to. <laughs> uh, but no, we had, because uh, that's all we had, and like we had a single mom, so um, we played, you know, Sega, Nintendo, all that good stuff. Um, and then we, like, it came to a point where it was like, okay, we're going to be a Sega family. And then when Sega, like, you know, <laughs> died out, decision. yeah, oh, I was like, decision. Sega <laughs> family, that's it. Um, and then uh, we were like, no Nintendo, no Nintendo. And then when the GameCube came out, my brother switched on us. He's like, I'm going to get a GameCube. I was like, no, why? Oh, Your mom but, threw him out of yeah, the house. Yeah, I was like, we're, we're a Sega family. family. Exactly. <laughs> you're out of here. Um, but uh, it's just, yeah, once I moved out and had my own place, and I was just, like, buying my own stuff. So no more brand loyalty. So it was good. Yes, that is the, the goal is to move out and buy your own. Once you're buying your own stuff, then you're yeah, you're not yeah. playing only PlayStation games, which isn't a problem. Um, but yeah, that's what I was stuck with as well. So we stuck to the play we're a PlayStation family. Yeah, yeah. But now in these in the twenty eighteen we can now come together and 
all be one. Yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I heard it. <laughs> um, yeah. Then I guess. Are there any, do you, any examples come to mind of being able to spend more time with people or seeing people in a different light through video games? And just, um, I guess the one example I used last time, but it's a good story, <laughs> is my grandparents getting uh, way into the Wii and they never played video games ever before, but when the Wii came out it was really accessible and something with it clicked. So they were playing uh, Tiger Woods golf with it. Like every weekend my grandparents and my auntie and uncle would play until like three in the morning playing games and they were talking about games at the dinner table. They were the ones talking about their career, their careers in Tiger Woods <laughs> at Thanksgiving and not me or my brothers. Um, so yeah, is there any... Were they great? Were they really good at it? I didn't see them play, but what? I gotta assume. My grandpa yeah. was talking about getting big sponsorship deals. Oh, wow. Okay. So... <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. I didn't mean to insult them. So I did not doubt him or question him. He seemed like a big deal. I remember when my mom wanted a Wii. That was mind-blowing. Yeah. The fact that like after taking... I think... Sega Master System was the last time I got either of my parents to play anything with me. And then when it came around to the Wii and my mom came over and bowled for the first time and said, I want one of these. I was like, really? <laughs> and then it, it, it almost worked. Where then it, I, I waited in line, I got her the Wii, it was her Christmas gift, great. And then months later, she hit me up and she's like, I bought a Nintendo 3DS. I was like, what? <laughs> Impossible, what did you get? She's like, this horse game. And I'm like, oh wow, how is it? She's like, well, the horse keeps dying because I don't know how to feed it. And I was like, well, that's funny, yeah, you don't know how to feed it, when I'm up there next time, I'll do it. And months later, I came up, turned out, I could not fucking, how do you feed this horse? <laughs> I don't know. I could not figure out how to feed this horse, so it kept dying on me too. But she had bought a 3DS, which was huge. She had, she bought a flight game for her husband where I came home and I was like what is this blue bomber thing she's like it's terrible but Tom wanted a flight game and I'm like all right well this is kind of what's happening with the Wii I guess the terrible attach rate but people are buying things and that's good yeah more or less same thing happened to me um, I was an only child and both my parents worked and I uh, was raised by video games essentially which explains a lot if you know me <laughs> um, so but they never played video games they never had any interest in it at all I tried to get them to play check this game out you might like this thing or whatever and just zero interest nope go that's the babysitter go be with your babysitter <laughs> and I said it like they're, they're amazing parents I shouldn't say it like that but uh, <laughs> the uh, um, but then sure enough they went to this retirement home like I don't know 15 years ago they moved and then the week came out and they just saw it at, like the rec center at the retirement home and they're like, hey, what's this thing about? We like did this bowling thing and it's amazing. Like, is that like $3,000? And I'm like, no, it's like 199 or whatever. And they're like, oh, that's still too expensive. So I bought it for them. So I bought it for them. And sure enough, they're like bowling every day. They're in bowling parties in the retirement community. People are coming over and bowling. And then I made the mistake of trying to buy him other games. Yeah, no, don't do that. And that was disastrous. No. Like, I bought him like three or four different things, like an RPG of this thing. And they're just oh, like, no. no, it's the bowling machine. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of coming from like a totally different perspective of this in that when I was a child, I did not have a console at all. Um, I had like my mom's gateway computer that came in those boxes with the cow. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Uh, and so I had like Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and then I got Chamber of Secrets, obviously, even though <laughs> Naturally. it's the worst book in the worst movie, but we're gonna, whatever. Um, and so I played like those games and then one of my friends had a PS2 though at some point and I was like, all right, well let me just uh, sit here and play some video games or whatever because I'm cool or whatever. Like I, I was very, I was very, like I'm not introverted but like like I, 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 I was autistic so I'm very like I am a person by myself and then there's other people doing things <laughs> with other people but I was very much like okay cool I'm by myself hey you're let's self contained go. Like, yeah so I, I the first video game I actually played was a chess video game on PS2 <laughs> because my mother refused to play actual chess with me and I was like well you whatever I'm gonna play chess with the video game because <laughs> you don't get to tell me who I get to not play chess with or was she, whatever. Was she not a fan uh, yeah. of chess? She, no, she hates chess. Okay. Yeah, it's the right. devil's game. It's, yeah, not, it's she, not great. She's an art historian. She's just like, nope, this game is dumb. You're dumb. And I was like, oh, everything is dumb. Whatever. Video games. And so that was like my intro to video games, except for one time I tried to play Kingdom Hearts at my friend's house. And I'm so serious. I'm like, if when you first start and there's these like creepy like ghosts that come out of the ground. It was so scary. I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. And now I don't like talk to ghosts. So that's how that affected my life 
in real <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> something. The crossover um, video games to real life Yeah, is I got real. more into video games like only a couple of years ago, like actually. Like I, uh, I had to have surgery and I was like, well, if I'm on bed rest, I don't want to watch Netflix forever because I've already watched 84% of <laughs> Netflix. Yes, I did actually check because I wanted to know. Um, but so I want to do something else. And so my friend, I had just come back from PAX East 2016. And they had this like Overwatch tracer car lift thing. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but it looks awesome. What is that? And then my friend told me about Overwatch and I was like, all right, I'll just play this video game like 700 hours later. Uh, so yeah, I'm, 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 I'm getting my feet wet now and it's very fun. But so you're saying marketing works. Those, those uh, lift, that's the first iterate, That's the first time I've heard those lift cars working. I, I was like, that looks great. I want to do everything that has anything to do with entirely that. Like, cool. Yeah, so cool. has your mind been blown by how far chess video games have come? <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> like I don't even. Well, why do they make those? Like real, real, real talk. Why does it? Why? Just why? Did you ever play For battle me? chess? Thank you. Uh, no, I just play. It was literally like. <laughs> Like it was, uh, I, I'm so embarrassed. It was just chess with like 2D. Like it was the it was the oh, worst. Oh, like 2D game. chess. Yeah, it was it was the worst oh, game. But I was playing it out of spite, so it was the best game. <laughs> but yeah, now I play actual video games, and I make a lot of friends doing that, and I really like it because I don't. Well, not that I don't like making friends IRL, but I am way worse <laughs> at making friends with actual human beings when they're in front of me. And I have a lot easier time making friends playing video games, especially Overwatch, because like there's so many tropes going on. You know, like you'll be playing and it's like, okay, I did like 2K heals per minute and like Hanzo's being a dumbass. And it's like, yeah, Hanzo is a dumbass. And it's like, Hanzo's a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of stuff. And like that, that feels really good. You know, when you're, when you're like bonding with someone on a level that you were like, I thought it was just me in a corner drinking salt, but it's also you. So that's, <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, who do I mean? Yeah, I mean? am a Diamond 3000 SR Mercy main. What's up? Damn. Damn. Yeah, and I actually got to Diamond on my own merit as opposed to being boosted, like 70% of the all the other. Mercy there's mains. that salt again. Yeah, because <laughs> oh. yeah, every I stopped playing comp a little bit after season five when I got to Diamond because a lot of people were like, do you do anything else? And I was like, I mean, I'm good at it, so like, what's the problem? Like. <laughs> Like, did you get healed? You did. Did we win? <laughs> we did. What's the problem? Exactly. Like, Am I missing the point of the game? Exactly. <laughs> like, if, like, for me especially, it's like, I thought the point was to win. Like, I'm sorry, but like, I thought we were supposed to win and like, we did. So like, why are you throwing salt at me? Like, this is like, not the time. Like, I feel like if we were losing, you could be like, why aren't you healing me? Yeah, I need healing. sounds like they're jealous. Yep, honestly. They're just jealous. I think they're just bored. Because I get bored halfway through too. Some of those matches are, are like, too good? an hour. No, no. Oh. It's just that, like, King of the Hill. Sorry. They're long. They're long. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> well, all right. Um, speaking of that, though, make, making friends through video games, yes. that's another aspect of, of the culture or the, the, what video games have brought to us. Um, I don't know, Brandon, if you have any stories about through that with your, and you, um, with your streaming and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, definitely as a streamer on Twitch, I've met a lot of people all over the world, which I never would have thought that, like, you know, years ago. Um, when I start, wait, I have another prop. Yes. About oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I'm this trying. This is gonna be a very weird one. It's weird, like what? I don't understand. Blind okay, segueing into props. Weird. Okay, so we're gonna pull out Catwoman the video game. Damn. Let's... All right. Oh, yes, I'm really we are. That, I'm really shocked that you were like, okay. <laughs> um, so I had like a long summer where I was just playing bad video games all the time, <laughs> and I paid, I think, a dollar for this game. This is the first game I actually wanted to it's return it for my dollar. And, um, <laughs> that was too much. <laughs> that was too much. Then. I actually um, worked so on I that game. I played this game and I wanted no, to kidding. start like a website about like <laughs> bad video games because I didn't really see it. And I started a website called UGRGaming.com. And then um, I, you know, started making reviews and doing uh, gaming news and stuff like that. And then from Catwoman, you never thought that. Um, but yeah, it launched that, a lot of careers. A lot, a lot of careers. <laughs> yeah. and, stuff. and I made a lot of friends just like through social media, and then like it got me into streaming. And then it, you would think that that one game brought me here. So yeah, it, the little passionate cat. I'm woman. so confused by this. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot strange. going on. It's on very back. strange. If you played it, it's not a good game. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but I've met a lot of great people through gaming, and especially a lot of my close friends now, especially through Twitch, has been Oh, awesome. it's Halle Berry yeah. as well. Yes, yes. yes. it yes. is the Halle Berry likeness. Yeah. I <laughs> like how is, it says Halle Berry is Catwoman, but is is lowercase, but it's still underlined. Yep. I feel yep. like that's such a weird, like, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to look at this back? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Very, very garbage, but I have it here for the memories, yeah. Well, that's great. Um, I guess in that vein, are there, do, do any of you have any, um, 
Are there any turning points you see from like a video game that brought you to people, maybe not in like the grand scale of the internet, of just like brought you to friends, brought you to people, uh, and that sort of thing. I'm trying to think of, I guess I'll think of my example as <laughs> I throw it, I thrust it upon everyone else. I mean, the I used to play a game called Warlords 2 on the PC. This was like probably like 25 years ago, maybe, maybe even, maybe not that long, but it's basically like a turn-based strategy game. And um, me and my friend played it. My friend was super, super into it. I was, I liked it. And we went, we played, this is like pre, like matchmaking and pre, so like, so we'd go online and you'd play ladder matches, right? And the ladder was like, you both have to email the person who ran the ladder and report who won. And it was like honor system and all this stuff. Oh my God. And I ended up being um, shitty at that game and not going on the <laughs> ladder. But my best friend was like always trading like one and the first, second, and third slot with two other people. And they ended up doing a meetup, and I happened to be there for it. And like, they're, we're all like really good friends to this day. It's super, super weird. Like, the one guy is like uh, assistant GM of the 76ers, and he was like, I met him through Warlords 2, just with, like bizarre stuff. And so it's like, you never know like the shitty little video game and then <laughs> who you meet and how long these things can last with you. But like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It is cool. Did anybody else do ladder systems? What is that? Yeah, two people. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I was I was big on the Monopoly scene. Wow! I, I was playing West Westwood's uh, Monopoly online on the PC, and I was I was big on Case Ladder System. Got to 16 once. Don't want to lie to. Don't want to lie. Had the hot symbol next to my name. What's the scale? What's the skill? What, yeah, what's yeah. The skill what is Monopoly? 16? Oh, out of like as many people are playing, oh, I, I was 16th. ranked number 16 in the oh, world geez. at Monopoly <laughs> on the Case Ladder System. Are you yeah. just good at rolling? I, was, I, I played under the moniker Superboy. <laughs> if any of you face me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in terms of friends in video games, right? Like, I mean, I think my entire career is built on it in the fact that when I decided I wanted to write about video games, I didn't know what that meant. And by the time I started applying and going to school for it and then applying, you know, working at IGN even, it was the idea that whenever I talk about it, right, and I would say this on podcasts and I say it to this day, that if you listen to this, you're my best friend because I talk in about video games to anyone I meet the same way I talked to Poe, my literal best friend, in our suburbs of Chicago in our basement when he'd come over. Because I was always very isolated growing up playing video games, that I loved video games, right? And I had friends that liked video games and had video games and played video games, but they weren't getting EGM and pouring over Game Pro and obsessing about all these different things. And so, like, it was a huge deal. I remember when I finally convinced Poe to buy a PS2. Like when he walked into the store to buy a PS2 with me and I walked him out and he bought that in NCAA that year, uh, football. And we came home and played till sunrise side by side. And it was like such a mind blowing experience to, to me to have someone that close to me that into video games. And so, you know, you're talking about people you've met or whatever, right? Like that's still with kind of funny what it's all about. Like we call our audience best friends because they are like, they're Zyger, right? He just wandered in one day when I was doing a criminal girl stream uh, and I was doing it on a lark. Look at this weird game. And Zyger knew everything about it. Oh. The game where you give the girls orgasm with the gun. He knew a lot about it. What? And it was weird. No, a different game. It was what? pretty much the same game, Zyger. I don't know about that. Oh, no. You're right. I'm talking about Gal Gun. When you knew yes. a lot about Gal Gun. You knew Criminal Girls was the other one where they were like in jail or whatever in Skippy Outfits. What? My apologies. Yeah, of course. Yeah. How could I digress. <laughs> the Twitch chat eating me alive. <laughs> but I mean, let's. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, what was that, Nakeel? Exactly, yeah, thank you for a lot of you wrong on that thing. But that's, yeah, what it's all about. And I think, you know, like, even playing DC Universe Online, when I fell down that rabbit hole and played for 700 hours, like, the people I played with, right, were my friends. And you would get on and you would know them and talk to them and have inside jokes and catch up on their day and what's going on with this. And it's been weird that when you leave those games, like, I still can pick up with them. We'll email every so often, right. but I'm not where we were, we were bound by this one thing that now is different. And like Monster Hunter right now, Monster Hunter World, I'm just coming off that bender. And <laughs> like that was the same thing, I'm jumping in with the same people all the time and playing. Yeah, it's that, um, it's like you have these pockets of your life and games are taking part of that now. Like there's school where you have these groups of people around you all the time. And like, yeah, so online games can be that, that same thing. I can't say that I, Whenever I played an online game, it was like, I'm trying to solo a WoW by myself, and I'll g roll into a guild but not talk to anyone, but that's fine. And then, yeah, I have like a friend that I played the Halos with, 
and that was like basically what our relationship was based on. So like we stopped talking for two or three years, and Halo 2 came out, and was like just called them up, and be like, hey, Halo 2's out. You got it? Yes. And like, okay, I'm coming over. And we're playing <laughs> Halo 2. And yeah, there's that sort of, and that's like now, that's how I keep in touch with a lot of the people that I don't go to school with anymore or don't work with at the retail jobs I used to work with. And just like being able to stay in touch with these people is another part of the personal part of video games and how they allow you to make your world kind of like you're holding your world together by long ropes and you're able to pull in one if you want to, and, but they're still attached to you if you need them. Um, Brandon, what's your next prop? I'm super curious about your props. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> oh, well, it's my favorite one. Uh, let's see. What? So this is a game favorite that prop. I mean, hopefully you guys know this. It's a, it's a smaller indie title. If we don't, then we will. The Evil. Oh, so they, right. uh, This is one of my favorite games of all time, uh, right. just because like I stream this a lot on Twitch. And I was finally able to find a copy of this version with Chris looking kind of crazy. Um, but like I played this a lot, and of course, like when I was a kid, I was so scared to play it. And like the zombies were real, and, and the you voice acting Chris. was incredible, you know? <laughs> the, <laughs> the pinnacle of voice great. acting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Barry, don't open that door. Yeah, that's stuff. Oh, chill. Um, <laughs> um, but I've just loved the series and, and uh, playing one and two and three, just reliving that, especially on Twitch and people coming in and talking about like the nostalgia of when they were kids mm -hmm. and playing it. Um, it's been a really good adventure to be on and then collecting them, and, and that's why like I have this and I have this. <laughs> uh, but Resident Evil to me is like the, the main game that I love and I'll always go back to, and I still play to this day, even the remastered version, which is incredible. If you've never played it, you should check it out. Um, it's on like every platform. Um, <laughs> But it's a, it's, it's just, it's horror. It's everything I've ever dreamed of in one game. Bad voice acting, bad graphics, everything. Um, right here. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, remember when, when that came out? <clears throat> I only got as far as the dogs jumping through the window. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I remember that too. And then I'm like, super nope. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm done with this game. And I traded in like the next day. I was done with it. Oh, game trade-ins. Yeah. What a world that was. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Just on the tangent of scary games, Resident Evil 7, my Steam time for the demo is six minutes. <laughs> and I think four of that was at the menu. It was just, I walked around the kitchen, nothing happened. I went, I don't want anything to happen, and I quit. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much. I don't know how anyone plays that. Um, where was I going with that? <clears throat> Nowhere. Anyways, <laughs> I guess, um, so uh, Dave. With your career in video games, has that um, adjusted or changed how you play games? Even as you're like in the recent years, with your being a C3PO and all that, or running a company before that, like when you're playing games, were you were you still able to like make the memories of them and not just analyze them and that sort of thing? So I think the weird thing about making games and playing games is, like you know everything about every game before it comes out, mm. like. Uh, probably like most people in this room, like you consume all games media, you're aware a game's probably gonna be good or probably gonna be shit, you know, you know a lot about games before they come out. And so then when you get them, it's very rare you're surprised by something, right? It's like, oh wow, this is actually delightful and I thought this was gonna be garbage or vice versa or whatever. And it's those things that I come to appreciate, like when I stumble upon something that like, you know, otherwise I might not have, like the, um, like Hitman two years ago, that episodic Hitman came out. Like I'd kind of given up on Hitman. I played every Hitman to date. I loved them all very much and progressively kind of fell out of love with them. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to give this one one more shot. And then because I wasn't super into it, I'd given up on it. I stopped following anything about it. And so everything about it was like just this unfurling of secrets to me, right? And uh, it's amazing. So it's for me, it's about, it's not so much that like, I break them down or I'm constantly thinking about like, oh, how did they do thing X or whatever? Because I'm just a stupid business guy. I don't make <laughs> games anyway. Okay. Um, but it's, it's more about like trying to find something I don't know anything about and then just letting it surprise me. Right. That's, that's what it's about these days for me, which is fun. Yeah, I totally had that change. I was a, I'm big into Grand Theft Auto because those are fun games. And then San Andreas was another coming Another indie hit, yeah. Another indie hit. So <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you've on. heard about it, the, the Grand Theft Auto. Um, yeah, just consuming absolutely everything about San Andreas. Absolutely every piece. And so like, I burned through it in like two days when it came out. And it wasn't that surprising. It was cool and fun because it was Grand Theft Auto. And then I completely did the opposite for GTA 4. Of did not see anything other than the, like, the three trailers Rockstar put out. And the only time I saw gameplay footage was waiting in line at the midnight launch, which was a waste of time. But that's another story for another day. Um, <laughs> 
But when, like, yeah, so like being surprised by the game was so much more impactful than reading all the stuff. But you kind of can't help yourself yeah. with the stuff coming out, and all the information is there. Um, but yeah, that's just it's just the, like the relationship with the medium is affected by how much, yeah, how much you put into it. It gives it gives back how much you put in. So you can find that stuff out if you want to beforehand. Well, I, it's, uh, part of that is how much, not even you want to limit yourself, but how much the publisher has limited themselves. Yeah. yeah. And where it is the fact of, like, you know, I remember playing through Last of Us for the first time and, like, getting to the giraffe, right? And, like, right. I remember getting there and be like, all right, cool, we're about to head into the main, last main part. And I was like, I'm going to walk my dog. So I took the dog out and walked him, and I finally started reflecting because I was playing it for, like, to make sure I was in the review conversation. So I was playing through it over a weekend, just steamrolling it, and got out there and started, like, like in the same time of them, like, let's take a breath. I took a breath and then thought back on the journey and started, like, crying on the street because it was, like, holy shit. And, like, to go through that and be surprised on that level, to get to the ending that I didn't see the way that they were going to get where they were going when they were on the way there, to right. then be able to talk to people right away about it, like, being surprised is the biggest thing. And we talk about it with movies all the time. They spoil everything. And games can do that as well, where you're just not caught off guard by anything anymore. Yeah. And so when you get a game that is truly surprising, it's awesome. But then it's more the risk of, like, we're lucky, right? We get the game early. We're, we know somebody. You're playing the game. You're doing something with it. But then when reviews start posting, when there's, like, a long lead time on a review, when, game, like, somebody inevitably in Europe has gotten it off the back of a truck <laughs> and is right. streaming the entire thing, like, and then people are shouting out, spoilers in the comments, or people are putting gifts up on Twitter and all these different, like, it's so hard to get that genuine moment about it. And so that's why when it happens, I feel like you have to applaud the people who actually kept it under wraps that long. Yes, and then you want to do the exact opposite, opposite thing and share it with I everyone. I want can. all the hits. <laughs> I want everyone. <laughs> but like, yes, even outside of that, like I want to run to my friend's house and tell them about this thing or make sure they play the game. I'm just like, did you play it? Did you yeah. play it yet? So we yeah. can talk about it. Like, hurry. There's something. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you, but there's something. Well, always the dangerous question of like, where are you at? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, this is the last thing I thought. Especially when neither of you have finished it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, dangerous dangerous well, uh, game playing. Yeah, it's playing chicken with spoilers. Um, uh, so Maya. Yeah, what's up? You're with uh, the secret Hitler people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, well, I, I mean, I'm the only... Uh, yes, you're the only, the only uh, yeah. employee of <laughs> Goat Wolf and Cabbage LLC. <laughs> it's just me. So with the board, so how did you get into working with board games then? When you were, did you play board games before? Or is it just video games are new or board, everything's new? Like gaming is very new to me. Okay. I am, however, very much accepting it as like a new phase of my life where I'm like <laughs> so down with this. Like let's go. I'm like ready to like let's take the train and go. But yeah, it sounds like when people are like, oh, what do you do? And I'm just like, uh, I majored in film music at Oberlin Conservatory. Uh, I'm a jazz singer. Like, it's very like, what are you doing here? Like, how did you infiltrate the system? And I honestly, uh, I want to thank my best friend Tommy a lot. Tommy was one of the co-creators of Secret Hitler because he was like, okay, so I made this game and we got a company or whatever and we don't know how to do the thing. Uh, you are good at things. Will you do the thing? And like that's literally how I got hired. <laughs> and because of that, it like yanked me into this world. But, like right after that, like two weeks later, I was at PAX and I was like, video games. <laughs> like it was very much like a. It was very zero to sixty. Like there was no, like warning or anything. It was just like you like games now, and I was like, <laughs> I like games now. So how much of an otherworldly experience was coming to PAX? Oh my was being god! Thrust into this world because I don't know. I guess that it sounds like the rest of us grew up with it. It was like, it was like the scariest, <laughs> but also like the best thing that has like ever <laughs> happened. Like when I when I remember going down the escalator uh, into the expo hall. And it felt, it felt like the internet was happening to my face. <laughs> like, I feel like I had just seen so many pictures of these things where I was like, yeah, people in booths and stuff. But actually going down the escalator was like, I feel like I'm descending into a chasm of, like, my life and the world and games and electro. And you're just, like, panning the whole thing, like, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. <laughs> and it's just like, it feels like I'm being dunked in, like, cold water or something, where it's like, all right, here I am. 
let's go. And it's like, <laughs> off to the races. And it's very, I don't know, I was just, I never expected that this would happen. I told my mom I was playing Overwatch, and she was like, you're playing video games again? And I was like, <laughs> is it I, that chess is again? It because, yeah, literally, I was like, Does she know so, by name? She, no, <laughs> okay. she, no, she was just so petty. Like, I told her it was a video game, and she was like, oh, you're playing video games again? And I was like, go back to having tenure or whatever. Like, I don't need this right now. And now she's like, oh, will you play Overwatch? And I can, like, take notes and watch. Like, she, like, reads art history books and then watches me play Overwatch. And she's like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> it's so weird. But it's also great because now, like, you know, we can do that bonding. Not like she's my best friend or anything, which she is. But also, <laughs> um, now that I have this new element in my life that she can also be involved in. You know, I was kind of afraid because, like, I am really close to my mom. I grew up with her being a single mom going to Yale while raising me. I don't know how. Um, and it was very much like us. And I like music a lot, and she does too. So it was very much like, yeah, we're mom-daughter music stuff. And then when it was video games, she was very much like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to align with my child on this, because I have never done this, so yeah. what? But so with the Overwatch stuff, is she like actively watching and commenting on, you're right, he, he, Hanzo is a dumbass. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> like now, she, now she knows who the people are. So when I was having the surgery, when I was in bed for like two weeks, she was watching the whole time. Mm. And she was kind of like, okay, I'm gaining okay. information. Like She was like, why does he keep saying that he needs healing? What's that? Does he not, <laughs> is he not done? Like when, when will he get it? And I'm like, you have no idea. It's happening literally right now. <laughs> like, you know, she's she's kind of picked it up over time. Okay. And she seems genuinely interested. In it. I guess it's just I'm just lucky that she cares about the things I care about yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that's cool. Is that like yeah. feeding your interest in games? Yeah. No. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Because she's like, oh, what other things do you play? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> let me show you nothing. All my things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now I'm trying to think I might wanna. You know, I got a friend who's like, I can help you build a PC, and I'm like, but what is technology? <laughs> so hopefully I'm gonna do that, and then I'll be able to play more video games, right? Yeah, like, yeah. hey, let's hop into Battlegrounds Ex or no, Fortnite. No, <laughs> no, uh, she's almost there. No, no I, well, I know a little bit about PUBG because I have a friend who helped make the desert map. My friend Ooh. Wyatt. Um, and I was chilling with him. He's an artist, and I love like hanging out with him because I'll just like study uh, for my Korean class, and he'll be doing art on his very large monitors, and I'm just like, this is cool. This is very cool. So I witnessed a lot of it happening. But PUBG is like, uh, I'm too scared. Like, uh, I can't. I feel like <laughs> when it comes to video games, because I'm like playing and I'm in it, it makes me like transport myself to the game, to the level that if it is frightening in the game, I get terrified. Right. But like, it's totally different than if I'm like watching a movie or something. Like, yeah, that's fair. I, I, I can watch like, I, I remember one time someone was like, what's Human Centipede? And I was like, I don't know. And so I watched <laughs> oh, all three of them. Oh, oh. I literally all watched them. all three of them like back to back okay. on a Saturday and was just like, <laughs> well. <laughs> you should have known uh, by the first one. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, well that, what, what about the first one made you have to watch the second one? Or was it just you have to uh, watch? That's just me like there's Will you stop talking about Human Centipede, actually? I gotta watch all of them. Yeah, you don't so want to like, talk about like that VL. for me was like, that was gross. But I still like managed it. Meanwhile, I tried to play Kingdom Hearts. But if there's a like, video game, no. like, you know, so like, if my there's brain, a video game based on the Human Centipede, no. you not play it? Okay. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> stop like, I, I'm so, I'm disappointed that you would like entertain that idea. Because now, now not. I feel like I'm not. I'm discouraging it. That would be a great VR experience. I was thinking the same thing, but I didn't want to say it. Multiplayer VR. I didn't yeah. want to say it. Oh my god. I'm sure it's been done in like a rec room or something. We'll figure <laughs> it out. Room. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess going back to the, the PAX thing, for the rest of us being growing up with games, right, how was right. it coming to your first convention, whatever that might have been? Your first um, big event that was about video games. That was mind blowing, right? Like I think taking what I, what I my, my growth with video games, right? And being on the outside for so long until really I feel like going to IGN to actually start going to this stuff and see that and be, and be along for the ride. You know, I, I, I look very young, but I've been around, <laughs> you know, this is my 12th year in the industry. Damn. And so going through all this stuff and seeing how PAX has grown and seeing then the relationships that do form here and seeing the people on our uh, subreddit or message boards or wherever, Facebook groups, talking about splitting rooms and doing this, it's like, wow, like I can only imagine if I... It, it's so hard, obviously, to express it to the kids nowadays. But when I was growing up at 18, the idea of 
we're all going to split hotel rooms and get plane flights. Like, yeah, how, no. who do I call? Am I calling American Airlines? How do I do that? You know no. what I mean? How do I figure out where, what a hotel even is in yeah. San Francisco, in no. Boston? Oh, where would I, I, there's no easy resource for it, so it just didn't happen. And the way everybody makes it happen now, and you come here and it is mini reunions at each one of these different events for different groups of people, it always blows my mind of like, wow, this is awesome, and this is what I would have killed for. And like, it, for me, the one that stands out is when uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker had come to PSP. And we did a meet and greet with the PlayStation guys over at, in, at PAX West, and that was at the donut place, and then everybody just had their PSPs that year, so you would just be walking and, oh, you know, tweet out or whatever that we're gonna be over at the beanbags, and you'd go play Peace Walker with all these people that would just show up, and it's like, wow, this is awesome. Like, this is what, the, this is what video games are always meant to be. <laughs> the power over people? Yeah, the power over people, yeah. <laughs> the obsession of getting that other soldier. But no, the ability just to come together and find that like-minded stuff. Yeah. And now, like, you know, I love PAX, obviously, but for me, PSX is PAX just more dialed in. Right. Whereas at PAX, you can be walking and be in a line of somebody be like, oh man, so what are you playing? And they're like, well, I only play board games. Like, oh fuck, I don't play any, so we have nothing here. Whereas at PSX, right? right it's right, like, right. Yeah. I love Shuhei, I love Shuhei. Ah, you know, everybody freaks out that they're all there about the exact same thing. Right. And so to see communities be able to come together and do that stuff, it's so yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Brandon? Um, yeah, PAX has been awesome. Like, it was actually the very first, like, big event I've ever done. Um, and I've grown, like, a lot as a person, as, like, you know, networking, um, being that shy kid, like, trying to talk to companies about, like, I have a website, I write about video games, could you, <laughs> could you talk to me? Um, and, like, you know, I did, like, my first, like, hosting thing at PAX. I got partnered before PAX, and now, like, I'm in my new, like, job now working for Verse Evil, doing, like, working on the gaming industry side, which I always wanted to do. So it's just, like, it always reminds me of, like, my journey of how far I've come, like, since the very first one. Um, and it was, yeah, the very first event I ever did, and it's my favorite convention ever. <laughs> what, what year was that? Oh, geez, I don't know. I don't even know. I, I started doing this in 2012. I think it was maybe okay. 2014. I think that might have been similar maybe. to my start. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a bad memory sometimes. Me too. So, yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Dave? Yeah, the cool thing for me with, with what I get to do is I get to travel a lot, and I get to go to shows, and it, it, I have people like Greg who I see at every single show, but there's a lot of people I meet just, and they're my PAX East friends, or they're mm. my PAX South friend, same thing. or they're my Evo friend, or whatever it is, right? And it's really, it's really hard to articulate how powerful it is that you can kind of jump into these communities and meet people in them and make friends, and you have this common bond, this language you can instantly like talk about and vibe with, and it's. It's one of the coolest things I have in my life is just this network of friends I otherwise never would have met, right? And uh, that, I look forward to that more than, oh, this panel or this game or whatever it is. I look forward to seeing the people I met at Evo four years ago or NCR or whatever it is, right? And can hang out with them again and having a beer and just catching up. And, and all the other stuff on the show is incidental to these little communities and groups of friends right. I've built up over the years. And, um, it can be daunting for sure, because so, you know some people are introverts and some people are really shy about getting to know people, um, and that's a really hard challenge. But like, uh, if you can find a way to do it, muster up the courage and talk to somebody you might not otherwise do, go for it, man. Because like that's the best stuff about these shows to me. It's just the people you meet and uh, the relationships you carry forward, independent of the shows, right? So, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm a fairly introverted person, so the first PAX, uh, my friend Chelsea and I came to, yeah, I think 2014. Uh, I, it's not a lot of going up to people and talking to them, because it's, I don't know what to talk about, and I get all of that flustered, but just like waiting in the giant bomb panel line, where we're able to, just being there for like two hours, you're able to, you end up talking to the people around you, and we're able to talk to the guy, and then we saw him at PAX East, we met a friend, and we saw him at PAX East, and saw him there, went up for drinks with him, and like, these things just grow naturally, whether you want them to or not, kind of, just because the you can't get rid of these people sometimes. <laughs> just because of how friendly the community is. That was a positive spin. Um, <laughs> depends who you are, I guess. Yeah, it depends on yeah if you want that to continue. <laughs> You're able to make it continue if you wanted to. Um, if you, you can cut those things off if you want. If you if you try. Um, but yeah, it's video games and friends and. <laughs> <laughs> I also like even like the small like nods, you oh, know, sure. like you'll be wearing some, like I'll be wearing like an Overwatch hoodie or something and someone else is wearing an Overwatch hoodie and you're walking and you're doing stuff, but you're just like, like that's really cool. <laughs> like even if you don't talk, it's just like, we like a thing. I like that. 
That's cool. Like, it makes me feel more comfortable in this space, knowing that there are people who like a thing that I like. Like, even if, even if we don't actually interact, it just makes, it makes, like, walking through the space feel a little easier, at least for me. The nod is, like, it's good. Yeah, you're able to find those pockets of people, as you were saying, like, there's different, people like different things, and you might not like the same thing as everyone, but you'll like the yeah. same thing as someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I guess, I don't know why, that reminds me of just, like, uh, growing up, I would have friends that not, like, I, I was the video game friend, and some people would have different consoles, but I was the one that loved video games and didn't really have people that ha or at the same level, not in any sort of gatekeeping way, but whatever. <clears throat> um, but, like, I just remember, I have specific friends that I remember with specific games. So mm -hmm. it's the one friend I had Diablo 1 with and Halo, and then my brother with Diablo 2, and then the other friend with, like, Jet Set Radio. My friend's brother, we happened to play that all evening. And just, like, remembering people through games, I guess that's a way, or it's kind of like a sense memory thing, for me at least, um, with, like, how music will remind you of times if you listen to an old album or that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, just, like, are, do, does anyone have any examples of, <laughs> of specific, of like, of even as a child with uh, playing games with specific people, um, and only, I mean, I only saw certain friends because we played certain games, mm. and that, yeah, and that. I actually mm -hmm. sort of do. Yeah? Yeah, I had a friend uh, when we were playing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, because it was, like, <laughs> the past, um, and we just had my mom's computer that we were on, uh, if I would get, like, stumped, uh, we would, like, tag each other in, basically. <laughs> Or I would be like, oh my god, like I've been yelling at Snape for 20 minutes and he won't give me the thing. And she's like, I know what to do. I know what to do. And then she would just like immediately do, and we would just be like, yeah, heck yeah, teamwork. Like it was yeah. like this friendship that we were able to like, like provide where the other one couldn't. It was like a completion type of thing, which felt even better about the game because then it was like, oh, not only did I do this, but I did this with someone else. And like we both did it, and that's so awesome. Like it felt like it brought us together as yeah. we were bringing the game itself well, together. It was such a different thing, right, for being a kid and playing with somebody and switching the controllers back yeah. and forth or whatever, because it was problem solving and, and learning to problem solve and something you cared about. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like school, it wasn't like some no, hypothetical. Yeah, no. It was like for me and Poe, right, early on, he was into PC gaming a little bit and he brought over full throttle. And like we sat down and started playing full throttle and it was a thing of like, wait, how do we get out of here? What yeah, do we right. do? And you start mixing it up and switching it up. And that continued on, you know, until I went to college and we, we went our different ways. We were still friends, but I mean, you know, different yeah, schools. I mean, yeah. uh, but it was like, you know, Metal Gear. Like when, I, when, when I came home with Metal Gear Solid and that changed the course of my life, but him and me playing it, it was like he was enraptured and then he was always the better sniper. Mm. It's like, oh man, we're, it's a sniper wolf section, pass the thing off to him, you gotta get her, I can't get her. And like us, that whole thing of the, us again, staying up all night long to try to go through to try to do that, that forged those memories that I think makes that series so important to me, let alone yeah. you know, memories we'll have forever and talk about all the time. Yeah, same. Yeah, it changes what games are important to you, too, and just, like, it, it pushes you down different paths of, like, why people like shooters, why people yeah. like RPGs or turn-based or that sort of thing. Um, and it's something you lose, I think, right? Like, it's, like, the older you get, the more rare it is to play a single-player game with someone else in the room. Yeah, And yeah. that's Definitely. why I think right now you're seeing such a resurgence in couch co-op and the fact that we miss that and we want that back. And it's the same reason, like, when I went back to visit Poe and I bought him a PlayStation 4 for a housewarming gift, I was like, we're also downloading this game called Overcooked. And he's like, that sounds stupid. I'm like, just wait. And he stayed up all night playing through it to beat it. That's actually one of the best things about having kids, if they happen to be in the video games. So I have three kids. I have girl 14, who is too cool for video games, and dad. <laughs> Boy 11, who loves video games, and girl 9, who's kind of in video games. But like, getting to experience like Zelda The Breath of the Wild mm. with all of them, because they all just happen to love that game. And just sitting there next to him and watching him play it, and them showing off to me and like, look at the sword I got dad and this thing and this thing. So it's like that part of my life that like, you know, I still remember like, if you, if you mentioned like the gold box D&D games to me on the PC, I'm instantly back in high school in Bob Grismore's bedroom and we're trading it off like that. I know 20 years from now when someone mentions Zelda Breath of the Wild, I'm gonna be thinking about me and Royce and like, you know, just beating Ganon, Calamity Ganon together or whatever, right? And so it's like that part of my life, which I thought was gone forever, it's kind of back now in a really cool way where I get to vibe out with my kids and have fun through them and the, their experiences with these things. So it's less about playing is just riding shotgun and hanging out with them. It's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But that's like my, one of my biggest fears 
as Jen and I talk about having kids, I'm terrified that these kids are not going to like games. <laughs> oh, no. Because like, it, be, it would only be karma and fate to do that because that's how it was. My, I'm sure when my father was picturing having a son, right, he was thinking about like, oh, we're going to work on cars together. And we're going to, you know, but my dad is the guy, you know, Saturday mornings, he was up at 7 a.m. out there cutting the grass, working in the garden, doing this, changing the oil in the truck, changing the tires, and all that jazz, going to the hardware store. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to sit in the dark basement for literally until dinner time. And I'm sure that weighed on him to some extent. Like, yeah. my dad, you know, was accepting, of course, but it was, I, now I think ahead when I have kids, like, that, I, I see, like, Donald Mustard, like, downstairs, he has this, like, quad setup of widescreen TVs, and one was running Netflix, and then the th other three, at, where, when it was hot, was Destiny 2, and all, right. him and his two sons playing, and it's like, that would be awesome, but I'm so terrified of being <laughs> what, I, what I was to my father. That's what. Yes, yeah, so that reminds me of being a kid and trying to explain to your parents about a video game because yeah. you're so excited and you want to tell them about it. And just, it, oh, yeah. not even about going over their head, it's just they have other things to worry about. Yeah. And well, also, they don't care. <laughs> that, I mean, that's my ultimate video game memory. Like, when you, when you asked me about this panel, like, this is immediately what sprang to mind is the fact that, like, yeah, my father, uh, an awesome dude. Uh, you know, great guy. I love him to death. We still talk, obviously. <laughs> uh, he, you know, we just didn't connect. And it was that thing of growing up, I was a mama's boy. And it was just the fact that I think mom worked nights. So she stayed home with me during the day and made sure I was all right. Dad would come home from work and it was exciting, but it's only a few hours and then I'm to bed. And like, again, I want to play games. He doesn't care about that. He wants to work on the garage. I don't care about that. And so I felt like there was a, uh, that rift. And there was always that question of growing up of like, does he accept me, right? And my dad is... You know, number one crane operator, Greg Miller. If you've been in downtown Chicago, my dad has worked on a building you see. He's, been a, cool. he, he's been a heavy equipment operator, crane operator for 40 some years right now. So, cool. so like he literally, you, what, I'm, I was, me, oh, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, me and Jen are gonna go down there. What corner are you on? <gasps> All right, look at that building over oh there. I did that, I put that up in 1980. Okay, thanks that's dad. So cool. All right, great, anyway. <laughs> uh, but like, that's what his passion. And so like when I talk about video games or play a game in front of him, it was always over his head. And on top of that, Mom was always like, I, you know, I don't know when I stopped believing in Santa, but I knew mom and Santa had a good relationship. <laughs> and then, like, mom was the one taking me to the toy store. Mom was the one who had to be up on Ghostbusters. Mom, you know, like, there was a lot going on that she was like the keeper of. And dad was not of that world. That was not his job. And on top of all this, I'm growing up as a terrified child all the time. I'm very worried about everything to the point of with money. There's one point my mom at Toys R Us breaks out a credit card and I burst into tears. And I'm like, I don't need the toy. I don't need the toy. We can put it. She's like, what is wrong? You're like, we're out of money. Yeah. Well, you're using a credit card. We don't have any money. Like, I don't, uh, so we're broke. And she's like, no, that's not how credit cards work. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is happening. My dad is a union operator, which meant, you know, you go on a job and eventually the job is completed. They don't, the building is done. They don't need a crane operator. And he would get, quote unquote, laid off, which right, meant, you right, know, right. go home and then you wait for the union to call within their job. But for me, watching TV and sitcoms, you're fired and that means you don't have yeah. a job and there is no money and it's in free fall and it's all going to hell and so during one of these times where I'm, I'm already worried right that everything's going to hell and we're going to be out in the streets I'm sitting there watching the animated series uh, Batman the animated series or Animaniacs or whatever but I'm cross-legged in front of the TV watching and dad's behind me reading a newspaper and it was after school and they ran a commercial for Genesis and I already had a Genesis I did really well in the first grade on a report card got to level up from the Sega Master System to the Genesis, big deal for me. <laughs> and it was the, you know, gotta get Genesis, like know, nothing fine. ever before. Genesis is so much more with Toe Jam and Earl, like the worst ADR, <laughs> they just shoved Toe Jam and Earl in there. <laughs> Anyways, but it was a Spider-Man commercial with then Toe Jam and Earl shoved in the middle. Doesn't matter. Uh, during the Spider-Man <laughs> part, I had like the most genuine awestruck kid moment of like, dad, that is the coolest video game ever. And my dad was like, all right, from behind me reading the newspaper. <laughs> And the next day, he brought me home from school and in front of the TV, wrapped in the Toys R Us bag no. with like that old school, like Toys R Us font, you know, remember yes. like going like that, was Spider Man on Genesis. Yes. And it wow. blew me away then and it blows me away today. Cause like my dad, who does not know how to turn on a computer today, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, not that he needed the computer then, but like, at, he made a mental note to remember what system I had in Spider-Man and go into a toy store. And I can only imagine. I yeah. can't fathom the conversation. He grabs this employee and he's like, do you know Spider-Man? <laughs> but he did it and he went through all these hoops without my mom being there to help him at all because she was at work. And like, he got this damn game and brought it home and did all this stuff. And it was like, 
so crazy for me of him being accepting of my hobby, yeah. accepting of my passions, and then also showing me, no, we're not broke. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me, Christmas is Christmas and my dad are <laughs> interesting. I don't mean to put my dad on blast, well. but he... I would like to put um, from Santa and dad on presents, <laughs> just to make sure credit was given where credit was due. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess the one present from Santa and dad, I remember like, I, want, I really like The Sims, and I was just like talking about like new expansions coming out, like ah, and I didn't think that I would get the thing I wanted, but then he got like The Sims Hot Date expansion oh. for The Sims. And I was like, I didn't think you'd remember. It's like something weirdly specific. I don't I know where that. you'd find that. Like you'd have to go to the EB games and specifically ask for this thing and not just get the main game again. So yeah, like stuff like that when they, when they remember or just like mm -hmm. they're, the adults are busy with their adult lives and you yeah. understand as a kid, but then you get the thing that you mentioned here and again or you pestered them for and it's like, yeah, it makes a memory. It's important. Yeah. I guess, Dave, does this give you uh, heartwarming feelings looking into the future <laughs> as Greg is your future son? <laughs> Greg is in place of your son in the future. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to describe. Once you have kids, it kind of changes your whole life in a very profound and great way. And the things you worried about before you had kids, you couldn't even fathom of worrying about them anymore. Like, like, you know, like I said, my girl, my oldest girl isn't into video games. And very much like Greg, I'd be like, oh my God, what if they don't like the same things I like? How am I going to bond with them? It's like, you just like what they like, you know? Like, she's super into music and ballet. And so I go pick her up at ballet and learn about ballet. And it's just like, it's not, it's, it's, it's impossible to predict what it's going to end up like. It's just, uh, and not, it's a PSA to go have kids or anything, but yeah. <laughs> uh, kidsrule.com. So many kids <laughs> conceived yeah. at PAX East 2018. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nine months from now, yeah. a lot of kids named Dave and Chris. <laughs> and it feels nice when they like, remember. You yeah. Because like, I've been telling you how my mom watches me play Overwatch sometimes. Yeah. And now she'll sometimes like a Google Overwatch, <laughs> and then she'll send me an email. And she'll be like, did you see that Jeff Kaplan, uh, she'll put in quotes, nerfed. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll just have the link. And I'll, I'll look at it and I'm like, yes, I did know that. And she's like, it's bad, right? And I was like, it's so bad. Like, we're <laughs> and it's like, it's astonishing to me that she even bothered to Google that. Yeah. Like, she's writing like two books right now. Like, that's like the last thing I think about when I'm writing two books, because, you know, I always, that doesn't make sense, but, like, <laughs> when we're I was just amazed books. that she, like, I don't know, like, was my mom still? Like, that sounds weird, but, like, you know, like, yeah. I feel like when you're an adult, there's this point where it's, like, all right, I'm doing my own thing, and then, you know, your mom's doing her own thing, and, like, you're talking, but, you know, it's not really the same. It's not, like, everything you do is not affecting her constantly, but also, like, it is still, <laughs> but she just doesn't tell you about it. Like, when you're a kid, you know, because you're like, oh, I, like, broke my toe, and so now my mom can't take me to school, you know, like, stuff like that, but, like, now I was just like, yeah, I'm playing Overwatch or whatever, and my mom's just like, oh, they made a new Moira skin, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> thanks, mom. Literally today, she emailed me that, because they released the Black Watch Moira skin, and she was like, they made a new Moira skin, and I was like, yes, For they Google did, alerts are it looks on great. <laughs> yeah, like, she's very, and she actively Googles, because she, yeah, she doesn't have, like, Overwatch, like, she's not playing the game, she's just searching for Overwatch, and just, like, finding a thing that <laughs> she also finds interesting, and, like, checking in with me to see if I think that's interesting, and I think that's really great. I'm like, praying for this to turn into the sitcom episode where the parent tries to get in touch with the kid by playing the game, and oh then they God. make friends online. No, she's not gonna, she she's reveals not, it's actually her. Like, like my mom, my mom cares about the things I care about, but she doesn't understand computers, like, basically at all. Like, she's writing two books, but she's writing them with, like, only these two, two fingers. fingers. <laughs> she's just, like, constantly, and she uses the word download for, like, anything on the internet. Yep. <laughs> like, if I, uh, if I log into Facebook on her computer, she's like, oh, you're still downloaded uh, Facebook on my computer. <laughs> or if she asked me to, like, print out an article, she's like, can you download that article? And I'm like, that's not, that's so, that's, oh, internet. Like, oh, like, you know, so she's not, she would never, okay. like, actually well, play. But she does, like, dream. she lives through my happiness, like, gratuitously by, like, <laughs> What, witnessing my happiness makes her happy, so like that's fine. Like, that's cool. If she doesn't want to play, like that's cool as long as she's not like mad or yeah. crazy or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's no, cool. Um, every time, every, every the weekly phone call with my father, who all, does not know how to turn on a computer, yeah. <laughs> a, a, every week we're talking, and eventually we get to the point in the conversation where he goes, "So, uh, how are the video games doing?" Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, the games video are doing games very well, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> video games as a the whole, games. very well. <laughs> 
aces. Yeah. The game's doing aces. All signs <laughs> point to a continuing. <laughs> Uh, Brandon, were you a, an island of, on your own with video games, or did you try and get your family involved? I tried. We all tried very several times to get my mom to play any <laughs> game. Uh, like the only thing I remember is like we were like, okay, we're gonna do Mario Kart. She'll like it. She knows how to drive. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> she 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 liked the characters. That's as far as we got. Um, but like the very <laughs> first like realization that she was like into what we were doing was when I got when we got the Nintendo 64 for Christmas and like she we opened it up we're like you know what you know, that's, that's strange we didn't know that um, and, and paying at, attention yeah you're paying attention to it yeah. <laughs> she hears everything we right, say exactly. <laughs> um, but then like now she knows like you know I work in gaming but she's like so how yeah she's like how's that how's that how's that thing yeah. you're doing yeah. like video games yeah that thing how's that going perfect mom going good <laughs> um, but you know with the generation I think it's gonna change a little bit but she she knows like the first thing she was like, are you making money? As long as you're making money, that's fine. As long as not anything with drugs or illegal stuff, we're good. And I was like, okay, it's, it's just video games, mom, we're good, we're good. Um, but she, she supports everything and it's been kind of awesome to kind of showcase the things I've done. And like, I started here, mom, video games did help. And thank you, mom, for giving me that Nintendo 64. So it helped out. Golden Line was good. Yeah, it's nice when you have a, a progression, a reel that you can show. Yeah. Like, hey, look at this thing. Like, hey, mom, you might be watching the stream. Oh, true. You Sorry, might be watching mom, the archive. I didn't use it. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> My family might be watching the archive, but we'll see. Um, uh, oh, God, I had a story and then I totally lost it. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, my mom. Her playing games was interesting because she's played stuff here and there. She might play a computer or she plays her solitaire games on the iPad and stuff. And that's when, like it's solitaire. It's a card game but on the computer so it's easier and there's fish floating around and stuff. So that's fun. Um, but I remember the one time when Rock Band came out and that was a big deal for my family. We actually got the whole family involved wow. playing Rock Band. My brother, like my big muscly guy in the reserves brother was singing uh, Sting and like I was on drums and my mom was on bass and like that was fun because that never happens getting the whole family together with all the siblings and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, uh, but then I remember leaving, going to my friend's house, and then coming back, and then my rock band stuff was out. I'm like, that's weird. Why is that out? And then my mom's like, I was trying to set it up. But I couldn't figure it out. I wanted to play. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, that, that's did so sweet. Her? I did. Yay. I feel like I might have showed her how to do that. I feel, yeah, she probably played once or twice when awesome. I was not in the house. So like the, her making the step to play games when I'm not around or when that's no cool. one's around yeah. and she just wants to do it for herself. That's such a, a, a big moment in, or just like seeing that in someone else that I didn't expect right, yeah. that from. But it's funny to watch it get extinguished so quickly. Because <laughs> yeah, <also> <laughs> like, my mom came over and we had her do PlayStation <laughs> VR Let's Plays. And she's like, this is a lot of fun. She took it off. How much is it? And I was like, is this much? She's like, fuck off. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are bad with money. And these are a bad decision. <laughs> Yeah, the, the barrier to entry, I think, yeah, of just having any, once there's a stop, that's what the Wii was so magical, of yeah. being, you point yeah. and you go. Um, but if there's, once there's a barrier, once it's a different game other than swinging the remote, yep. it's an issue. That's why the Wii had such great sales and yes. terrible attach rate, where no <laughs> one bought software for it. Yeah, but that's what happened. That's the, the different types of games for different types sure, of people. Sure. And, and yeah, like seeing Dave raising his children right, playing video games, fingers crossed. <laughs> Two of the three of them anyway. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> the other one's Fox, but... <laughs> <laughs> Black sheep. <laughs> But just, yeah, it's a generational thing of just, like, our parents not seeing or not having that or not growing oh, up yeah, with it. Oh, yeah, not growing up with and it. And right? there, are, there are ones that pick that up immediately and go with it. And that's just the, the way things are. But now that it, because it is so prol prolific and all over the place that we are able to and then we're able to pass it on to our kids or friends or nieces and nephews and, and all that jazz. And that... Yeah, it's close enough. That is <laughs> a personal, a series of personal histories of video games. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. Does anyone have well, some time to promote things? Anyone have anything to promote, Dave? Uh, funny, you should ask, Eric. Um, <laughs> we have a video game coming out Tuesday. It's called Extinction. What? If you uh, like Shadow of the Colossus but thought it had too much story, do I have a game for you? <laughs> uh, it's out on PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. It's rad. Damn, cool. That's great. Oh, are we just uh, going? Do you have any other panels? Oh. I'm done. Oh, I have uh, panels? Oh, I'm just product. I'm just trying to monetize. Oh, okay. yeah. Fair enough. Monetize <laughs> the teams. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Maya? 
Oh, um, what am I doing? Stuff. Oh, right, Secret Hitler. Uh, yeah. We're playing Secret Hitler in the Kickstarter room every day from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, and that's just me running those games. So if you want to cool. come play Secret Hitler with me, you should totally do that. I've been playing the game since 2015. And I've lost two times. So pick up oh that God. gauntlet <laughs> and play Secret Hitler with me. Uh, I don't have Twitter like those dudes, yeah, but I did put woman. my battle tag there because if you're like me and you brought your entire computer to PAX, you can play <laughs> Overwatch with me while I'm in PAX. Or you can just add me and I can play later, whatever. I like playing with people. I honestly like hate playing Overwatch by myself. I never solo queue. I always like get some friends and then we go. So if you would also like some more friends or somebody to heal you, add my battle tag and I'll totally play with you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Brandon? Um, well, this weekend I'm on the Versus Evil booth uh, doing the live stream over there. Um, so if you want to stop by, I'd say uh, see Pillars of Eternity 2 and Banner Saga 3. We have that there. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. That's I have lots of gifts, so if you like that, that's good. Yeah. I do like I like the gifts you post. They're yeah. very fun. I, I have a lot of them. I have a library <laughs> full. So let me know. I can exchange some. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Craig? Uh, in two hours, we're doing the first annual Kind of Funny Chicken Wing Ding, B-Y-O-W. The right W here. stands for wings right here in this room. <laughs> I've spent $200 on chicken wings already oh today. God. I forgot. So <laughs> come eat them. <laughs> where, did, where did you get wings? What's your purpose? Well, well, of course it's B-Y-O-W. I'm still going to help people out, though. I mean, <laughs> Exactly. I got Postmates coming. Yeah, that's why I got this coming. Oh, yeah. that's poor. Uh, I went with uh, Wings Over Boston, which I've heard a lot of good things about. Cool. I went against my better judgment because I love Joey Noel and ordered boneless for her. Thank you. Boneless You're welcome. Great. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, Bye. I forgot something. Sorry. Tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, also in this location, we're going to have the Celebrity Secret Hitler panel where we like roped in some celebrities to play Secret Hitler. We've got giant placards and we've got giant... Uh, like liberal tracker boards. We have cool. uh, Mike Selinker, creator of Pathfinder, and Graham Stark from Loading Ready Run, and the brothers Chaps who created oh. Homestar Runner. So if you want to oh. see <laughs> some like cool nerds play Secret Hitler and yell at each other, you should totally Excuse do that tomorrow there. night at 9 o'clock in this room. Yeah, this room is popping off. Yeah. And I have something to remove, more than just filming you weddings. Can't leave. More than just filming <laughs> weddings. <laughs> 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 you of all people. More than just filming weddings in Regina, Saskatchewan. And if you need a wedding filmed, contact me. Um, but my, my friend and I have started doing our own videos. If you want more content like this, the personal history, talking about lives and video games, my friend Kelby and I started doing videos so you can see the hot four views on ericandkelby.com. Take yeah. to our YouTube channel. But this is where this panel will be posted and the last one with my other amazing guests. And uh, the video series of, of this concept going forward will be there as well. Um, but thank you everyone for coming and thank you everyone thank for being you. on the panel. Give them a big round of applause. Y'all are great. Enjoy PEX.